the holy name of Jesus in Islam. No Muslim, learned man, can ever come before the Muslim congregation and speak about Jesus as Isa. Isa means Jesus in Arabic. We can never say Isa. He must say Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, revered Jesus, may peace be upon him. If he just said Isa, which means Jesus, he'll be kicked out. Oh, barbarian, you take the name of a mighty messenger of God and you call him just like that Isa, that's like calling Dida, instead of calling me Mr. Dida. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is how we take his holy name. Now, I say that that prophecy that I just read to you refers to Muhammad. <coughs> I might conclude that I can carry on like this, you know, for an hour, for two hours, but that is not my purpose. I'd like to give you an opportunity of asking me questions. But I end by rereading that verse with a little emphasis on the pronouns, which will give you an idea that this person that Jesus was prophesying about was not a ghost, was not a spirit, was not a spook. The words, again. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them. Uh -huh. How be? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. For what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, he shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. I'm asking, learn it. Can you find another verse in this whole encyclopedia called the Bible? With eight masculine pronouns, one verse. With eight masculine pronouns, or feminine pronouns, or neuter genders. I would like to see that. I am sure there is it. In other words, Jesus Christ was emphasizing that the person who is going to come to guide mankind into all truth will be a man, a man, a man. We say that man was Muhammad. This is our belief. But I'm open to questions. I leave it to you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> you know, I'm at your disposal. Dida is standing here. Um, <laughs> 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 Mr. Dida. <laughs> Mr. Dida, um, we open for questions, any comments, um, or observations which anybody would like to make. Mr. Dida, I see here on this name that you talk, you talk about the Muslim way now. Is Muslim and Muslim the same thing? I suppose you see the Westerner, the real pronunciation is Muslim. But sometimes when you spell it M-U, the Englishman has a tendency of Muslim, you know, like Muslim. So some people go out of the way to take the precaution that you don't make Muslim out of us, so they could have A, hey, Muslim. It means the same thing. You're trying to say the same thing. Yeah. You, you acknowledge Jesus Christ as a prophet. More than a prophet. Is it, do you regard him then as the son of, uh, of Christ, uh, of, uh, of God? You see, I would say yes, and I would say no. <coughs> see, yes, uh, metaphorically, in, in the sense in which God speaks about the righteous, his righteous servants in the Holy Bible, whom he describes as the sons of God. Because according to that, God has got sons by the tons in the Bible, in your Bible. He's got them by the tons. But when you ask an ordinary Christian, a <coughs> layman, how many sons has God got? He's the one. The only son, the only son. In the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 3, it says, And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them to wife all that they chose. And when the sons of God, in African seals from the heart, and when the sons of God, uh, came in unto the daughters of men and brought children to them, they became great men of old, men of renown. In the book of Exodus, God says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Jeremiah, he says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Psalms, God speaks to David and he says, I will declare a decree unto thee that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. In the New Testament, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of in other words, anybody, everybody, every tongue we can hurry. If you follow the will and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, you are a son of God. It's a metaphorical statement. Everybody who follows, like Jesus told the Jews, he said, you are of your father the devil. Now, did they have those sharp ears of horns, or tail with barbed hooks, but 
Were they less handsome than his own disciples or himself? No. What did he mean? He said, you are of your father the devil. Meaning that if you do not hearken unto the word of God which I give to you, you are hearkening to the suggestions of the devil, then you are devilish. In the language of the Jew, your father is the devil. If you are a godly person, in the language of the Jew, your father is God. He said, in that sense, I say, Jesus was preeminently the son of God. Because he would be more faithful to God than any of us can ever be. From that point of view, we say Jesus is the Son of God. But we Muslims, we take exception to the Christian. When he says that Jesus is the only begotten Son, begotten, not made. This is what he says in his catechism. Begotten, not made. So I'm asking the Englishman, because I seem to know English better than any other language. So I Naturally, I have more dialogue with English-speaking people than with anybody else. So I said, now, excuse me, sir. When you say, begotten, not made, what are you trying to emphasize? Will you please explain? When you say, begotten, not made, what are you really trying to tell me? And believe me, no Englishman, yet, in my 40 years of experience, has opened his mouth to tell you what he means. I don't know if you people might be brave, uh, American, yes. Uh, I met an American, <laughs> of course he speaks English. He said, it means sired by God. So what? <laughs> he said, no, no. You ask me what it means. So I'm telling you what it means. <laughs> so what did you say? So no, no. I'm only telling you when you say, begotten, not made, it means sired by God. Of course, that is what you don't mean. So what do you mean? He said, no, no, it doesn't mean that. So I said, if it doesn't mean that, why do you say that? Can't you see you're creating unnecessary conflict between me and you? You are creating, if you don't mean it, why say it? Because that is the thing that's dividing 1,200 million Christians of the world and 1,000 million Muslims. I divided just because of that. The way you are saying things. Maybe I say you are sincere, you mean well. But you know, when you are talking these terms, you don't know the implications in your own language. I don't know what your implications of what you are saying. So we Muslims are getting qualified when you talk about begotten, not made, so we take exception to it. You see? So we are fighting over words. Say, why did you say that? And then you say, look, I don't mean that. Like the Englishman, you know, he speaking about his wife, he's speaking to her mother, mother. You know? He's telling her, he's talking about the children, mother. So I ask this Englishman, is she really your mother? Younger than you? I said yes. Is she your stepmother? He says no. Then you say mother. <coughs> How is she your mother? He said no, no. My children call her mother, and I love the term, so I also call her mother. I said bloody fool. Why don't you tell me she's your wife? <laughs> Our problem is words. But to carry that further, didn't the, the Holy Ghost, if I don't know if you accept it? Uh, 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 visit Mary at the time of the conception. Yes. And then whose child was did Mary carry then? If it's, if it's not it's the not Son the of God. You see, now, in other words, at the back of the mind, when you're posing that question, it means you still stand by begotten, not made. Mm. You see, Adam was made by God. By the act of will. You believe, I believe. Everything he created was by his act of will. Be, and it is. So you agree and I agree. But you say, Jesus, because now he had no father there, so his father is God. I said, the first thing he created, every dog, pig, and donkey, whose father was it? Who, who was the father of all these things? Or the cockroach and the rat? Who? God. God, in other words, he is our Lord and cherisher, our revolver, our creator, and our nourisher. As said, we say, he is the father of everything. In the case of Jesus, as the Quran says, for God to create, whenever he decrees a matter, who God Almighty, he merely says to be and it is. In other words, he willed it and Jesus came into being. As he willed the universe to come into being, the universe came into being. As he willed mankind to come into being, of course we do not take literally you know what you think that God Almighty took a lump of clay and he molded the shape of a man and you know he breathed into it and he became a man. Then he took another lump of clay, you know maybe an elephant 
and then he breathed it into the He took another lump of clay and, you know, became a bed bug. Another one, a lice. I said, my God doesn't work like that. You know the concept I have of God Almighty. The Quran says, but you somehow are to Allah, who is seen as due the primal origin of the heavens and the earth. وَإِذَا تَدَا أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُونَ Again, the very same words. He said, whenever he declares a matter, he merely wills it and they come to be. And the Bible also confirms in the book of Corinthians, it is said, by faith we know that the heavens and the, heavens and the earth were created by the word of God and that the things visible came through the force invisible, which means the invisible.